some areas of mathematics are easier to learn than other areas. Some people like certain types of math more than other people. But there's one subject in mathematics that I think many of you will study and you'll struggle with. And maybe you've already taken the class and maybe you liked it, but speaking just from personal experience, just from teaching this class, because I've taught this class in college in the past, I've found that people really struggle with it. And if I compare this to other classes I've taught, other math classes, people struggle more with this class. It could be because maybe it's me. Maybe, maybe I'm teaching the material the wrong way. Maybe I'm presenting it the wrong way. But I feel like I've made a serious effort to, at least when I've taught it in the past, to make it as easy as possible, like to try to like really make my presentation easy. You know, I'll go slower. I'll, I'll make sure not to assign like really hard homework questions. I'll make the test fairly easy. I won't make it super hard. And for some reason, people always struggle with it. And I think I know what that reason is. So first, let me tell you what the subject is because you've probably taken it. And if you haven't, you might. It's trigonometry. Trigonometry is a class that typically is taken in colleges and typically it's taken after a course called college algebra. So in order to take trigonometry in the US, you have to have some algebra skills. You take a course called college algebra where you learn about polynomial functions, rational functions, quadratic equations, systems of equations, uh, graphing of basic functions, etc. And then you take trigonometry. Now, this is an interesting book because this entire book is on trig. So that's why I wanted to show you this book. And we'll, and we'll look at this book later in the video. We'll take a look at it, a brief look. Later on, I'll show you this book uh, because it's kind of interesting. It's a whole book on trig. It's a textbook, by the way. It's not a workbook. It's a textbook. So very comprehensive. It's got everything you need for a trig. So why is it so hard? It's because you have to memorize a lot of stuff. And for some reason, we have a hard time memorizing things. I think it's because we don't want to, right? What is memorization? You have to basically put something in your brain and not forget it, right? You have to memorize it, you have to know it. So, you know, you read something, you know, the sine of pi over three is equal to the square root of three over two. And then you have to know that forever. For the rest of the semester, you can't forget it. The cosine of pi over three is one half. And you have to know that. For the rest of the semester, you can't forget it. I can't tell you how many times I've had calculus students and they're like, I don't know what that is. And you know what? I can relate. I can relate because I am the same. I also had to struggle to learn trigonometry. A lot of people will, will bash the poor students. I feel this is terrible, but they will. A lot of people will look down on students who are in calculus and don't know trig. Like, oh, you're in calculus. You should know trig. I don't think that's a good attitude. I think trig is special. I think trig takes a special kind of person or a special kind of effort to get good at. I mean, trig is hard. Trig is hard. I took trig in college, just like many of you did. And I got an A. I had a really easy teacher. She was really nice. She would write nice stuff on my test. Good graph, smiley face. I was like, oh, you know, I felt good, but I struggled. I, I didn't really, I learned it, but like, I didn't really learn it. You know, I didn't really learn it. And then when I got to calculus, I was like, ah, oh, what's the sine of pi over three? Oh my God. What's the sine of, you know, four pi over three? Game over, right? I don't know what the sine of four pi over three is. How do I do that? So that whole process, you know, of, of finding trig function values that you learn in trig, uh, takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of effort. Once you know it, understand how it works and why it works, then it's like a game changer. Most people don't. Or, or they'll memorize the entire unit circle or they'll use some mnemonic. A mnemonic is like a memory device that you can use to memorize things. The best way, and I'll just make this brief, the best way to learn those trig function values, this is just my opinion and I have some friends who, who, who've taught mathematics who also agree, so uh, I'll use them as credibility here. Uh, they also agree, very smart people by the way, they also agree that the best way is to just memorize quadrant one of the unit circle and then just apply that and the knowledge of trig functions and reference angles to find the rest of them. Use the reference angle method. And I think that's the best way because it requires minimal memorization. And why is that important? Because nobody likes memorizing things, right? It comes down to the fact that 
people don't want to just remember things, even if they know they have to use them for later. You don't want to just put stuff in your mind, but unfortunately, mathematics does require memorization. And I feel like trigonometry requires more memorization than, let's say, algebra. I mean, in algebra, what do you have? You have the quadratic formula, right, which is pretty easy. You use it a gazillion times. You've got uh, the equations of lines, slope, intercept, point, slope. Pretty easy. You use them a gazillion times. Um, you've got a couple of the Kramer's rule. There's an easy trick for that. I mean, so some of the stuff is pretty easy to memorize. Compared to trig, trig, you've got all these strange new functions, sine, cosine, tangent. Then you've got the reciprocals of those functions, right? Cotangent, cosecant, secant. It's like, oh no. Then you got to graph them and they've got asymptotes and it's just, then you got to solve trig equations, right? So it just gets crazy for people. And I think that's why people struggle so much in trig. So every time I've taught trig in the past, if you're a teacher and you're watching this, maybe I'm, just, I'm not saying what you should do, but this is good advice. Go slow, right? I have always had a hard time teaching trig, let me tell you. It's it's one of those classes. Um, I would never request it. I would never... Uh, so most teachers, uh, every semester when they teach, usually teachers have a choice somewhat uh, of what they teach, right? There's there's department need, you know, what, what does the college need you to teach? And what do you want to teach? And there's usually a balance, right? Sometimes you have to teach things you don't want to teach, or sometimes there's, you know, there's a schedule you don't want. That's okay, right? You, you, know, you compromise. And uh, you can request a lot of times, like what you want. You know, it's a request, not a guarantee. And I would never request trigonometry. No way, because trig is so hard to teach. Why? Because it's such a hard subject, because people struggle. And that's why I wanted to make this video, because I think that if you're in trig, I want you to know that everyone knows that it's hard for people, right? And there might be some people watching this video who will leave comments, and I can't wait for them. Something like, oh, I took trig and I thought it was easy. Good for you, and make sure you post that comment, right? Because I want to know. I, I was not one of those people. Let me tell you, trig is a killer. It's a killer. And and again, for those of you that think trig, trig is easy, that's great. That's great. I think it's easy now because I've taught it and I've done it so much and I've used it so much. You know, because you know, when you teach mathematics, you become really good at it. You know, you become really, really good at teaching it. You just blow through stuff. But yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a killer. It's a killer. Trigonometry. This one's by Charles McKeague and Mark D. Turner. So I guess we should look at this book. I'll just give you a brief look at this book. Let's take a, a look at it right now. Oh, and I'll leave a link in the description if I can find it. I, I don't know uh, if this book is still being used. I, I don't know anything about it. Uh, all I know is I have it here in my collection and I probably paid um, less than $10 for it. All right, let's take a look at this book. It's really nice outside today. So Let's take a look at it outside in the sunshine. Trigonometry, 6th edition, by Charles McKeague and Mark D. Turner. Let's take a brief look at the content. So here you have, like, all the identities and stuff. And honestly, like, a lot of these, you know, I mean, do you have to memorize these? Well, these are actually pretty easy to memorize, but some of the other ones, um, like, these are a little bit harder. Typically, when you take a trig class, like, depending on your teacher, they'll give you, like, formula sheets that you can use for some of the formulas. So... Yeah, Cuesta College. Cool. I don't know where that is, but that sounds cool. Sixth edition. And here's uh, the content so you can see. So the six trig functions, right angle trigonometry, radian measure, graphing and inverse functions, identities and formulas, equations, triangles, complex numbers and polar coordinates, review of functions, and then exponential and logarithmic functions. And you have some answers and chapter tests. So the entire book is trig, which makes it extra special. Uh, there's not, I mean, there are, there are a lot of trig books, but there's not that many. Uh, most of the time when you take a class in trig, like in today's world, it's going to be like a combined book. It'll be like a, a book that you can use uh, for pre-calc or trig. So the six trig functions, right angle trigonometry, radian measure. That's typically what's used in calculus. Uh, radian measure is pretty much exclusively used uh, in calculus, graphing and inverse functions. So this is the graphing of the trig functions, right? Identities and formulas. And then we have some equations here in chapter six, triangles, and then complex numbers and polar coordinates. And then you have some appendices and some answers. Let's take a look at the answers first. So you can see what the answers look like. So you see you have answers on the back here with some of the problem sets. 
And it looks like you have answers to the odd numbered exercises only. And this is a standard textbook. You know, it's got a modern layout. It's modern. It's nicely uh, written. For example, here's uh, reference angles. We were talking about this earlier in the video. So here it talks about the reference angle. Let me zoom in here. Let's look at this. It says, the reference angle, sometimes called related angle for any angle theta in standard position, is the positive acute angle between the terminal side of theta and the x-axis. Yes, and that's a definition you should know, right? Always know it, always say it, always draw your reference angles, and that will take you very far, and you'll be a trigonom trigonometry monster. In this book, we will denote the reference angle for theta by theta, and it's got a little hat. Yeah, and the, for this definition, theta, theta hat is always positive and always between 0 and 90. That is, it's always acute. And so here you have good examples uh, of the reference angle. Here it's 30. So here you want the reference angle for 135, right? So you draw the positive acute angle made, okay, made with the uh, terminal side of theta, which is here, this red line, and the x-axis. And it's positive, so it goes in that direction. And so you get 45 basically by subtracting. 180 minus 135 is 45. You might say, oh, do you always subtract? No, that's not the right thinking, right? Every picture is different, so you don't want to memorize that. What you want to memorize is the definition, and then from the picture, then you decide what to subtract. And I think that's what a lot of people have a hard time with when it comes to reference angles. And that might have not made sense. I'm sorry if it didn't, but that's the idea, right? So reference angles, reference angles, reference angles. Super key. Here's the reference angle theorem. Oh, I love that. Look at that. Let's look at this. It says, a trigonometric function of an angle and its reference angle are the same, except perhaps for a sign difference. Yes, this is super key. That's one of the things I love about this book. It's how to the point it is and how clear it is. This is something that I always would write on the board when I used to teach trig, because this is a key thing, although I never called it reference angle theorem, but super key. And so you use that together with the definition, um, and that will help you, right? Find the trig function values of uh, any common angle. It's got good exercises, as you can see. So lots of good exercises. It's got good examples. I mean, it's just a solid, uh, it's a solid textbook. It's an entire section on arc length and area of a sector. So as an example, uh, the book that I used uh, to teach trig in the past was a pre-calc book. So it was a pre-calc trig book. And this was basically covered at the end of another section. So this has an entire dedicated section to this topic. So it's just a little more thorough and a little more in depth than a lot of the other books. You're gonna get more examples and more coverage of the trig topics when you have a trig topic book, a trig book. Look, an entire section on velocities, completely unheard of, right? Not something that you see uh, in a pre-calc book. Why? Because it has other topics to cover. So. Wonderful book. Um, it's just like a treasure of a book, right? If you're trying to learn trig, I highly recommend this book. It will help you incredibly. And, you know, I'll leave a link in the description, but keep in mind when you're looking um, at uh, the prices, you know, try to get used ones. And also, this is a textbook, okay? It's not a workbook. You can get a trig workbook on Amazon for like 10 bucks, right? But this is a textbook. This is solid and it's got way more mathematics than any other workbook is going to have. So, totally worth it. Before I forget, if you want to learn mathematics, including trigonometry, I have courses on trig, algebra, calculus, differential equations, advanced calculus, abstract algebra, etc. Go through my website, mathsorcer.com. And they're actually on the Udemy website, but please use the links on my website, mathsorcer.com. And um, I've set the prices to be as low as possible. So I'm pretty sure that you'll get the best price if you go through my website, mathsorcer.com. Anyways, if you're taking trig, don't fret, okay? It's normal. It's a struggle. I do think this will help you. So yeah, good luck. Take care. I keep doing math.